Fast 100, close to Delia under the whip. Village Kid on the outside is getting to him. Village Kid has hit the front for 50 minutes to go. And Village Kid wins the cup. Bill Coulson, the driver. On the inside, close to Delia, second. Off the back, and the kid went to the lead. It's Village Kid out, leading two and a half from the Lara Boy. They're full of by trial throughout and race away too. Into the stretch, Village Kid well clear. Nalara Boy and Trial Flutter battling on hard, but the kid's in front. Lewis is hard at him, coming at him. Trial Flutter on the outside, but Village Kid won the cup. Second Trial Flight, third Lincoln Storm. Number two, and this year's Miracle Mile is a Tashy Luck, trained and driven by young Chris Gleason here at Mona Vale in Sydney. A Bay Horse five, 42 starts for 19 wins. $62,113 in prize money. And that's a tashy luck in the centre of those horses there. White with the red V, the blue sleeves, and also the red cap. A tashy luck originally from Tasmania has done most of his recent racing in New South Wales. Since coming to Sydney, a tashy luck has had 13 wins, 12 under the care of Chris Gleeson. Included in his most recent wins are the 1985 Carlton three and four year old championships at Wyong, the 1985 Spring Gift at Harold Park, the 1985 Jim Reeves Sprint, and a close second to Bill Student in the New South Wales Media Guild Cup. Although plagued with unsoundness, Atashi Luck has recorded two sub-two-minute miles from his last three Harold Park appearances and goes into the event as one of the most lightly raced horses. His last start victory at Harold Park saw him street a good class field in 159.4, a win that really thrilled his trainer driver, Chris Gleeson. But that win pleased me a lot uh, because I, I hadn't been able to work him uh, quite as hard as what I would have liked and uh, for him to, to come out, come from the seven gate and come around the field and win easily and, and run in a sub two minute mile easily, uh, it really it really did thrill me and uh, after that I was just, just praying that, that we'd get a start in the Miracle Mile. Number three is quite famous, a bay horse five, Trained and driven by Jim O'Sullivan in Victoria. He's had 67 starts for 23 wins, $142,513 in prize money. Has been a model of consistency throughout his racing career. And 1985 was a big year for the Victorian, having won the 1985 Victorian four-year-old championship in two minutes point two of a second, the 1985 Geelong Cup, two heats of the 1985 Australian Pacing Championship, and was second in the Bendigo Cup behind Bag Limit. Quite Famous was invited to last year's Miracle Mile following his sec record of 159.7 as a three-year-old at Harold Park. But he finished fifth. His driver, Jim O'Sullivan, is one who doubts whether Village Kid can be beaten out of the mobile gate. But what of his own horse's chances? My fellow's a, a very, very tough horse and, and I think if the pace is on, he'll be right in it. You know? He won over the 1,900 metres at the Valley, uh, Mooney Valley, two starts back. He set three wide for three furlongs and sat in the death and went 59 and won with a little bit in hand. So he's sort of quite up to it, but village kid drawn one makes a big difference. Yeah. Number four, of course, Bill Student is a scratching. And number five is Paleface Bubble from New South Wales. And as Doug mentioned, he certainly got the affection of the crowd. A son of Paleface Adios who won the Miracle Mile in 1976. And as I said, Michael Lilsby driving Paleface Bubble. His dad, Joe, was successful here two years ago behind the grand old 12-year-old double agent. Paleface Bubble was one of New South Wales' top four-year-olds last season, defeating area code in the Len Smith four-year-old championship at Harold Park. He had previously recorded a 158.7 in a three-year-old event at Albion Park in Queensland. It was during this season that he won several events at Harold Park, including the Eastern States Challenge and the Globe Derby Mile. After an absence from the racecourse, Palfay's bubble resumed recently to score an impressive win at the Penrith Paceway on the 31st of December. He followed up with a brilliant win at Harold Park and an even more impressive performance in his last start in the Max Truer Cup at Bankstown. His trainer, Michael Ilsley. He's only had the three runs since he's been in my care and uh, the Bankstown run was by, by sure his um, best run. Uh, when he was back in running, like to be quite truthful with the three furlongs from home, I didn't think he could win the race because I knew he was just going to have to sprint for so far. And when John first pulled him out, he didn't seem to be going up that quick, but John said after the race that he didn't let him go his full extent going up the back straight. And he was virtually off the track at the clubhouse turn and to settle down and to fight it out with Glenn Thunder 
it was for sure his best run to get up and beat Glenn Sunder. Just kicking again, tricky one running on, pale face bubble and Glenn Sunder, Glenn Sunder kicks but pale face bubble too strong, pale face bubble wins it a long hit on the line to Glenn Sunder. Number six is Glenn Sunder, a bay horse four, trained and driven by Vic Frost, who won the Miracle Mile behind the Queenslander Lucky Creed way back in 1970. Glenn Sunder has had 42 starts for 29 wins and $265,348 in prize money. He's been an impressive colt since his early racing career. Glenn Sunder commenced his three-year-old days with a win in the Harold Park Guineas, followed by the 1985 RC Simpson Sprint before being spilled. He returned in the spring of 1985 to win a series of feature events in two states, including the 1985 JPS Cup, the 1985 Bankstown Cup, the ABC Pacific Coast Pace, the Cranbourne Cup, and two heats of the Australian Pacing Championship, as well as the Victorian Four-Year-Old Championship. His recent second to Palface Bubble in the Max Truer Cup at Bankstown was indicative of his, his outstanding will to win, and after a torrid run, as you saw, he fought back doggedly going to the line to be only beaten by three metres. Trainer Vic Frost is still confident, despite drawing six, although of course now, with the scratching, he'll start from five. Pouring out in six is, uh, you know, it's certainly a disadvantage, um, you know, uh, with village, village kid in, drawn in the one, uh, which is, you know, probably uh, most of the drivers would have been looking to get uh, one, two or three. How would you rate his performance when he won that four-year-old final down in Melbourne at Mini Valley? Uh, that was a big run. He, he, he ran a very good race down there and um, he seems to like the track down there and uh, the track is a bit bigger than Harold Park but uh, he, he's, uh, he, he raced very well in, uh, in Victoria. Well number seven of course will be Lindy's Nymph. Received a reprieve this morning with the scratching of Bill Student. A Bay Mare seven from Queensland trained and driven by Darrell Alexander and of course is owned by the Queensland Racing Minister, Mr Russ Hins. 89 starts for 27 wins and has so far amassed $63,420 in prize money. Well, there's the field for the 1986 Miracle Mile. And let's go across and have a look at the tote board and see how the punters have got them placed in this year's Miracle Mile. Number one, Village Kid, returning 90 cents and 70 cents. Number two is Atashi Luck, returning approximately $7 for the 50 cent return and $1.60 in New South Wales. Number three, quite famous, $8.50 and $1.90. Number four is scratched. Number five, and he, is, by the looks of things on the tote board, has been the best backed horse to beat Village Kid. That's Powerface Bubble, $1.90 and 95. Number six, Glenn's Thunder, $2.05. And a good return there for the place. Of course, only paying first and second, and that's why those place dividends are probably a little bit higher than normal. And Glenn's Thunder returning well there for the place, $1.10. And the outside of the field, number seven, the Mayor Lindy's Nymph returning there almost 100 to 1. So this marvellous race, it's been won by some marvellous paces over the years. You go back to its first year in 1967, won by the mare, Robin Dundee. She was uh, a magnificent horse, the only mare so far to have won the Miracle Mile. But then you go down the honour roll over the years and some of the greatest paces in Australasia since 1967 have been successful in the Miracle Mile. You think of horses like How Wiz and also that marvellous performer Lucky Creed. 1971, who'll ever forget Mount Eden's incredible performance here when he gave them almost 60 metres start and still managed to career away with the race winning by almost 25 yards. And then you think of the 1974 Miracle Mile. What a thrilling finish that was. Hondo Grattan and Palface Adios. The length of the straight on Harold Park. Hondo, Gret Hondo Grattan getting up in the last couple of strides. Young Quinn in 75. He'd won the Inter-Dominion. He came to Harold Park. He drew six. Everyone except the New Zealanders said he couldn't win, but he was right behind them and uh, he just stormed down the outside and won. Palface Adios finally was successful in 1976. In fact, Palface Adios had seven starts in this race. He won it once, he finished second four times, he finished third once, and he was only unplaced once in all those starts. And then you have a look at some of the other great horses. Popular Arm won in 1983. Pru Chevalier last year. So really, most of the great horses have been successful in the Miracle Mile. Village Kid, there he is, Chris Lewis. Just uh, getting the horse ready over there, waiting for the starter to call them forward for this year's Miracle Mile. They're going to run just a couple of minutes late by the looks of things. Lindy's Nymph uh, will start from the outside. And Atashi Luck is there as to, of course, his village kid. On that 
And you can see that's the shot looking down the back straight. And there, of course, most of the crowd waiting for the start of this great race. They really are jam-packed in there. Can't see why uh, there is a delay. Finally, the John players has moved out onto the track. A very, very long delay for the start here. And finally, the Western Australian is coming forward. And so too is Atashi Luck. They're starting to move up behind the mobile gate for the start of the 1986 Miracle Mile, quite famous, is going forward. Now, Lindy's Nymph is in a bit of a gallop on the outside. She won't settle down. Alexander trying to get her to settle down. She still won't uh, settle down into a pace. She's galloping. Now she's down and pacing, so I think the starter might let them go. Glen's Thunder right up on the steel, and so too is Paleface Bubble. Now, Village Kid normally flies out of the barrier so watch him down in one and the other one to watch is out towards the outside of the track Glen Thunder they're away in the Miracle Mile of 86 and Village Kid is going to go past the winning post the first time on top now this is the turn where they thought that he might skip or might get out of his gate but he didn't he's got round the first turn easily and he's got right away from quite famous and Atashi Luck on the inside running third the next one in the one one is Pale Face Bubble from Lindy's Nymph and Glen Thunder drops out to last as they swing down the back the first time you'll notice blue and red lights the blue light's still on they're about to go through the first blue light and if they're still on as they go through them they're running through inside 29 seconds for each quarter it's village kid on top running second at the moment is quite famous and Atashi luck and neck away third the next one in the one one is pale face bubble from lindy's nymph and glenn thunder and they went through the first quarter in 28.5 as they come back onto the bottom turn they've got about a thousand meters to go on the mile and on top it's village kid he leads by a length at the moment to quite famous and Atashi luck running third the next one is pale face bubble from lindy's nymph and last of all still is Glenn Sunder as they come down the main straight and they greet the judge with a left to go the bell ringing in their ears 31 for the second quarter so they're really going to be struggling to catch this brilliant West Aussie out in front he leads by length on quite famous Atashi Luck still in behind him parked away behind those now is pale face bubble he's dropped off by a couple of meters Lindy's nymph on the inside and still it's Glenn Sunder last of all as they go down the back they've got 500 to travel and village kid he's being held quietly there by Chris Lewis he leads by length on quite famous Famous Atashi Luck, nowhere to go. Going up quickly, three wide now is Pale Face Bubble. Glenn's Thunder's going four and five wide, and Lindy's Nymph is last of all. They went through the third quarter in 28.8 onto the circle, and they've got about 250 to go. Lewis looks behind and says, let's go. And Village Kid kicked away from Atashi Luck and Pale Face Bubble, and it looks as if the Western Australians are going to take out two miracle miles in a row. Here comes Village Kid. He's an outstanding horse, and Chris Lewis waving the whip of the crowd is going to come away. Village Kid comes down wins it brilliantly and let's see what the last quarter 28.1 156.9 second was Atashi Luck third then was Pole Face Bubble from quite famous Lindy's Nymph and Glen Sunder so just outside the Miracle Mile record but what a marvellous performance he went straight to the lead and that second quarter of 31.5 that was where he won the race he managed to slow them down and from then on it was just a one horse affair and like last year, his compatriot, Western Australian Pruer Chevalier, he just kitted with them when the pressure was on with 300 to go. Let's have a look at this marvellous Western Australian come round the turn again. And here they are, look at Chris Lewis looking around and he's saying, oh, I've got you all covered. And there he is waving the whip of the crowd. He knows he's got this race well and truly won. He's almost hard held. He's treated the field with absolute contempt. What a marvellous performer. Uh, what a great performance from Atashi Luck, who's managed to hold on there and take second placing. That really will thrill his young trainer driver, Chris Lewis. I should say Chris Gleason. It was Chris Lewis, the trainer driver of the winner, number one village kid. On the New South Wales TAB to return 90 cents and 65 cents. And the second horse... Number two, Atashi Luck to return $1.65. And of course, no third dividend in a, in a race of less than eight starters. The margins 13 metres by two metres. And the horses coming back now to receive the all clear after the running of the 20th Miracle Mile. And what a great Inter-Dominion series we can look forward to now at Albion Park in Brisbane during the early weeks of April with horses like Village Kid, the marvellous New Zealander Royden Glen, who couldn't make it to the Miracle Mile because of the Auckland Cup coming up in just over a week from now. 
And those two horses, no doubt, will start as the favoured ones, along with Glen Thunder and Parfait's Bubble. They just got too far back, and no pressure being applied to the Western Australian. And really, that was the end of the section. When he went to the back the first time with nothing challenging him, Chris Lewis was probably smiling from ear to ear as the crowd applauds the winner of the 20th Miracle Mile. So there he is, the winner of the 1986 Miracle Mile Village Kid, driven by Chris Lewis, trained by Bill Horn, and Western Australia have now won five Miracle Miles, the last two in succession, and they're now hailing another champion from the West, Village Kid, the winner of the 86 Miracle Mile. Let's go back to the weekender. Well, as a tipster, I'll have to put my cue in the rack. It looks like more grass salad for me for a few.